Now that we can actually access our database, we want to set up a model. And from this, we want to extend Eloquent's model class, which will allow us to use this globally as a model to create users to do everything we, we need to do. So we're going to start just by creating a models folder within app just to keep everything nice and tidy. And inside of here, of course, we want to create a user model. So let's just give this a namespace. So it's namespace of app models of course and here we just have a class of user now of course it's not that simple because this on its own is pretty useless what we need to do is extend eloquence model class so let's use illuminate database eloquent model and here we just extend that model class so now just by doing this, we now have the ability to use this model as a direct connection to our database table. And that is obviously users. Now you might be thinking, well, how does this know that it's going to use the users table? Well, what Eloquent does is it will take the singular version of this, which is user, and it will automatically look for a table with the plural version. So in our case, it's users. If your table differs, of course, what you can do is say protected table and then you can give the table name here. Now I could do this just to be explicit. Of course, I don't need to. So we'll leave that in just so you can refer back to it. So now we want to see how this works. Well, let's go over to our controllers. So let's go over to our home controller again. Once again, we'll just kill the page here. And up here, we're going to say user equals user find one. Or we could do user where email alex at codecourse.com pretty straightforward. So now this isn't going to work because we have to import our model name. So let's go ahead and do this. So it's just app models user. And this is it. Let's go and do a var dump. And we should see that this has worked. Now this looks a little bit different. Now the reason that we're getting a builder class back is because what we've done is we've kind of built up a query here. So we're using a where clause, but we've not grabbed the first record. So remember when we did find one, that just gave us back that record straight away. But of course, now we're doing this, we don't actually have a record. So we need to say first, and that will just give us that user back. So this is what we get. Now this looks a little bit longer as well, because of course now we're working with a model. So what Eloquent has done is it's returned us a model with all of the properties. So it works exactly the same way. So this now has an email property, so we can access that. And uh, it just is slightly different. The reason being is obviously within our user model, we can now create methods here, which will help us out a little bit later on. But we now have that set up. We've tested it out and we know that we have our user model, which is the only model we're going to need, at least for now. And it works. Now, there's one caveat to this. And let's just test this out. So if we head back over to our home controller and try to create a user. So let's do this by using user create. And then we want to pass in an array of the columns that we want to fill. So let's say we were registering a user. Well, we'd enter a name, email and a password. So let's say name Alex. And here, email, let's just give a different email. And of course, a password. And for now, let's just put something like one, two, three. Now let's run this, you'd expect this to work. This is just the syntax for creating a record. What actually is happening here is Eloquent is throwing a mass assignment exception. And that just means that it's protecting us against writing to our columns. So what we need to do is specifically define what columns we want written to. That's really important. So we know for our user model, we can have fillable columns of email, name, and password. So we know that we always want to write to these. If you had other columns that you didn't want to update or ever, ever want to really touch, then you don't have to add them to fillable. So now when we run this, you can see it works. We see the home view. And of course, over in our database table, we see that new record just in there. So this is great. I'm going to go ahead and delete these records because we don't need them. Because next, what we're going to do is look at signing a user up. So we're going to be doing 
pretty much what we've seen here. But of course, we're going to take some other things into account, like hashing passwords and all that good stuff. So let's go on and start to allow our users to sign up.